Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so uh, in a video I already made, I showed you how to solve Pell's equation, which is an equation of this form. So we saw how to find integer solutions to an equation of this form uh, in general, so for any d. Uh, but in that video uh, where we talked about finding general solutions, we um, identified this as an interesting case, uh, just like um, x squared minus uh, 6y squared uh, equals 1 is an interesting case. And the reason that these are both interesting because um, uh, solutions to uh, this equation uh, give us a way to find uh, triangular square numbers, triangular square numbers. And solutions to uh, this equation give us a way to find uh, square pentagonal numbers. Uh, but the discussion in this video will just be about the uh, triangular square numbers and you can use the same argument to uh, show how this equation here is related to square pentagonal numbers. All right, cool. But let's focus on this equation uh, in this video, yeah? Okay, cool. Now, I've already drawn some triangular numbers here, uh, and I've drawn some square numbers, and there's a clear pattern that we can identify, which is that um, the triangular numbers in general are just a sum up to uh, n, right? Like so like the nth triangular number is the sum of the integers up to n and um, for the square numbers uh, It's not exactly that. Uh, it's a sum up to um, uh, 2n minus 1. So sn is the sum from 1 all the way to 2n minus 1. So I'm saying like uh, tn in general actually let's use m tm in general the mth triangular number will have to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus m and therefore equal to uh, by the sum of the first n integers formula which I prove in a different video it's equal to m times m plus 1 all divided by 2 and in fact I proved this formula that I just wrote down some of the integers up to uh, some integer m I proved this formula in two different ways so check out that video but anyway, anyway, um, uh, both of them interesting. One of them induction. But anyway, we've got that. And then uh, now we're saying Sn is equal to 1 plus 2 plus, no, it's not equal to 1 plus 2. Sorry, y'all. Uh, 1 plus 3 uh, plus 5 plus dot, dot, dot. And then we'll have to end on uh, 2n minus 1. And this sum is equal to uh, n squared. And you can check um, using at least a couple of methods. Okay, it's equal to n squared. Uh, and clearly, right? Like s1 is 1, s2 is 4, and s3 is 9, which is 3 squared, and so on, right? Okay, so sn is clearly n squared. Okay. All right, so where to from here, and how does that have anything to do with solving this equation? Here is how. First, let's write uh, what we just discovered, which is that tm is equal to uh, tm is equal to m times uh, m plus 1 over 2 and then uh, sn is equal to n squared and then make room so let's get rid of all of this here down at the bottom all right so doing that and bringing this guy to focus how does this have anything to do this stuff anything to do with that equation well look at what would happen if we tried to figure out um, when TM will equal SN TM equals SN requires that we write um, M times M plus 1 over 2 is equal to N squared which uh, we can get slightly friendlier form if we write M squared plus m is equal to 2n squared. Okay, where to from here? Well, from here, uh, we can complete the square on this left side and write the following. And um, I guess I should lower this down to where I'm going to write. So starting from here, we see that next we can write the following, which is uh, completing the square on the left side, we have m squared plus m uh, plus a quarter 
So I just completed the square. So this is now a perfect square binomial. And then to make up for adding a quarter, I have to subtract a quarter. And then now this will equal 2n squared. Got it. As I said, this is a perfect square binomial. And that binomial is x plus, oh, not x, sorry. So used to working with x with quadratics, it's m, m. And now that threw off my game, it's m plus a half. And it's really late. Why am I recording a math video? This late is like 2 a.m. Okay, and then minus a quarter um, is equal to 2n squared, All right? Okay, now uh, getting common denominators inside the parentheses there, we can write uh, 2m plus 1 uh, over 2 squared, uh, which is the same as uh, 2m plus 1 squared over 4 and then minus a quarter, nice, uh, equals 2n squared. Now, multiplying both sides of this equation by 4, we can reduce uh, to a simpler equation, which is 2m. Uh, what happened? 2m. I'm running out of lead. 2m plus 1 squared. Uh, and then minus 1 is equal to uh, 8 uh, n squared. Okay, and I'm going to write 8n squared as... 2 times uh, 4n squared, which I can in turn write as 2 times uh, 2n squared. But look, now rearranging this equation, we can get 2m plus 1 squared minus 2 times 2n squared is equal to 1. And then, let's get all the distraction out of the way. So you saw how I got here. And then from here, from here, if we let, if we let um, x equal 2m plus 1 and let y equal 2n, then um, we have exactly this which is x squared minus 2 times y squared is equal to 1. So that's why uh, finding triangular square numbers has everything to do with solving this particular Pe Pell's equation uh, when uh, d is equal to 2. Yeah? Okay, cool. Now, uh, if we solve for m and n here, we'll have to say that x minus 1 over 2 is equal to m, and then y over 2 uh, that y, sorry y'all, and then y over 2 is equal to n. So then from our solutions x, y here, if we want to know when uh, a triangular number will also be a square number, we need to figure out uh, where um, t uh, x minus 1 over 2 will be, and then compare it to uh, s uh, y uh, over 2 from the solutions x, y. Now, uh, in particular, since um, we know, since we know that, um, since we know that x squared minus 2y squared equals 1 has uh, 3 comma 2 um, and um, 17 comma uh, 12 as its first pair of um, solutions for positive x and y uh, because we know that these two are solutions to this here we see that x is 3 and y is 2 in this situation which means that t and I'm working off of this now which means that t sub x is 3 minus 1 divided by 2 will have to equal s y is 2 so 2 divided by 2 but wait that says 3 minus 1 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. That says T1 has to equal S1, which we know is true because both T1 and S1 are equal to 1. And then it also means that uh, from this other solution that T17 um, uh, minus 1 divided by 2 will have to equal S12 divided by 2. 
and uh, 17 minus 1 is 16 divided by 2 is 8 so that means t8 will have to equal t8 will have to equal s6 now we know s6 will have to equal um, 6 squared which is 36 and then t8 um, will have to equal um, t8 will have by this formula right t8 will have to equal 8 times um, uh, 8 times um, 9 which is 8 plus 1 divided by uh, 2 which is clearly also 36 yeah okay cool all right so I hope you enjoyed this video and there will be at least one more video on Pell's equation and that video will concern um, uh, showing why uh, if a solution xy is found why um, alpha equals um, x plus uh, y root d uh, to uh, the nth power, so alpha to the n. So if alpha equals x plus y root d, we said that alpha to the n will always solve, well, well the coefficients of alpha to the n, where by coefficients we mean these guys, we said will always solve um, this equation. And so in the third um, video I have in mind right now, I said there might be more than three. So I said at least three videos. So in the third video, it will be discussing why such alphas will give solutions. So proving why such alphas give solutions. Um, all right, cool, cool, cool. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, keep watching. Take care.